Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the story down to you as quickly as I can. Okay, the WBC had ordered that the winner of Cotto versus Canelo would have 15 days to negotiate a deal with Gennady Golovkin to fight for the next fight that the WBC title would be uh, defended in. So Canelo won that fight. 15 days pass. The WBC, well, 14 days pass, and the WBC says, okay, we're going to extend it another 11 days until today, December 11th, 2015. I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live, and it's looking like Canelo is going to fight the winner of, now, this is what I'm hearing. I don't know if it's true or not, but this is what I'm hearing. It's looking like Canelo is going to fight the winner of Rosado and Claudi in May and in March, Golovkin is going to fight Toriano Johnson, and in September, Canelo and Golovkin are supposed to fight. That's what I'm hearing. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this just makes the WBC look like a joke. You know, for one, I said I did in another video where I said that I don't feel that the WBC would ever strip Canelo, him being a Mexican fighter. But now I'm trying to figure out, like, how are they getting this deal done? Now, the WBC did say on their um, on their Twitter is that it's up to the promoters to get some type of deal done for them to fight. They don't care when it is as long as they do fight. But I'm thinking, well, what about the voluntary situation? You know, you said that Canelo wouldn't get a voluntary because Canelo was a voluntary. Daniel Gill was Cotto's voluntary. Cotto took a year to fight Daniel Gill. Cotto was granted another voluntary in fighting Canelo. The deal was that Cotto was supposed to pay Golovkin $800,000 in step aside money and also $300,000 to the WBC, equaling $1.1 million. Cotto said, fuck that belt, fuck Golovkin, didn't pay, as it stands right now, he didn't pay the WBC, which is why the WBC stripped him. The winner of Cotto versus Canelo could have only, only, only Canelo could have won the title. If Cotto would have won, he would have, like, he was stripped the week before. So it's not known yet if Cotto has paid Golovkin that step aside money. But the point I'm trying to make is Cotto had two voluntaries. He didn't fight for a year. You know, he fought um, Sergio Martinez in June, won the title. And then he wasn't injured or anything. Didn't fight again until June of um, 2015 when he fought Daniel Gill. Fought Miguel, I mean, fought Sol Canelo Alvarez in November. And now you're saying that Canelo... You, you said that the winner was going to have to fight Golovkin. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. The WBC has so many interviews. Go check out a friend of mine, Hoop Jab, who did videos with uh, Mauricio Suleiman. In fact, I'm going to post it down below in the description box. And you'll see that the WBC is kind of looking hypocritical because I'm thinking to myself, well, I understand if the promoters, Golden Boy Promotions, who promotes Canelo, and K2 Promotions, who promotes um, Golovkin, if they say, okay, let's let this fight simmer a little bit. Let's um, let's have an interim fight in between, and then, you know, and then, you know, by by time September comes, Golovkin will be a little bit more marketable, and you'll have enough time for Canelo to get a win under his belt. As the I, I just... As the middleweight champion, I just don't like in my opinion, if like if I had to if I had to blame somebody for why this fight is not happening in May, I'm going to blame Golden Board Promotions because I'm thinking to myself, they know that if Canelo loses to Golovkin, they, their their number one cash cow has taken two significant losses of his career. And where does he go from there? You know, I understand that they want Canelo to, you know, continue to bring in some money for them because let's face it, Golden Boy Promotions, while they're a good promotional company because they've been putting on the fights that we fans have been wanting to see, they still don't have too many big name boxers. Lucas Matisse took a loss in 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 a horrifying way, you know, via knockout, something you never thought would happen. Um, David Lemieux got knocked out and lost his title. And if Canelo would have lost to Cotto, Golden Boy would have been in a lot of trouble. So I can understand why they just don't want to go into Golovkin next. And if you don't know, I have Golovkin beating, um, I have Golovkin beating Canelo just off of overall boxing ability. Cotto, I mean, Canelo looked good against Cotto. In my opinion, a lot of people saying Cotto won the fight or it should have been a draw. Canelo won the fight, just like Canelo won against Iris Lindelar. But it's just my opinion, right? But now I'm just confused on like what's up with the bullshit of this this, this interim fight in between. You know, why can't Cotto versus Canelo? I mean, why can't Canelo versus Golovkin happen in 
Like, why, why can't it happen in May? Why? You know, like, like, what's the reason? And also, the catch weight I'm hearing is, uh, Bernard Hopkins also talked about it on the Fight Game 360 with Jim Lampley, is that the catch weight may be 157 pounds. And I'm thinking, this whole, you know, I mean, it's good that it's not going to be 155. Canelo weight is good. It's going to be a couple of pounds um, above Canelo weight. But it's just like, why? Like, if you're the 160-pound champion, WBC, fight 160-pounders. I don't like how this, how, how the title has been held captive by these catchweights. You know, now I understand, I have to point out that Bernard Hopkins beat Felix Trinot. Bernard Hopkins beat Oscar De La Hoya, you know, at a catchweight of 156 pounds. Was it, was it De La Hoya? He fought De La Hoya at 156, didn't he? He fought De La Hoya at 156, if I'm correct. You know, I'm tired. I've been up and I'm supposed to know this type of stuff. But the point I'm trying to make is I understand that in big fights in history, catch weights do happen. But Canelo is a guy who you saw how big he was against Cotto. He comes into the ring at about 175 pounds. He comes into the ring weighing weighing just about the same, if not more, most likely more than Golovkin than he when he comes into the ring. So why can't you weigh in at 159? You know, why can't you weigh in at 158? Why can't you weigh in at 157? You know, like, why can't you just, you know, it just that like, the whole situation doesn't make any sense to me. And then all it makes me think is they want to get the upper hand or try to drain Golovkin in some type of way, shape or form. You know, Kodam and Canelo at the end of the Kodo fight say, yeah, he wanted Canelo. I mean, he wanted Golovkin next. What happened to that? So I'm um, T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. That's the that's the that's the boxing business for you. I never I never thought in my wildest dreams anyway that the WBC was going to strip Canelo. I never like that that just didn't even get in my mind. You know, so I knew when they said okay after the 15 days was up that they said another 11 days. I knew, you know, I I knew. I mean, no, when they said I'm excuse me when they said it was going to extend another seven days. Now I keep saying 11 days. To when they was going to extend it to December the 11th is what they extended it to. You know, I knew it just, it just was too good to be true. But I'm um, T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. All my social media is right down below. Um, what I do on my Twitter is I'm, I'm connected to everybody. So what I do is I retweet the news, you know, so you'll see it on my timeline along with my videos. Also, we're back in the business of um, covering fights on its consistent schedule. So, of course, when Golovkin versus um, Canelo does happen, or Canelo versus Golovkin, better believe I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. But I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.